Hello again everyone, welcome to another Transformers review. This is Graham, also known as the Collector 75. Um, right, for today's review, um, I'd just like to dedicate this one to my good friend, Tatamus Prime, um, because you're just getting into the Beast Wars, and I liked your Beast Wars reviews. Um, and you give good, what's the word, unbiased things. If you think a figure is shit, you'll say that. And to be honest, a lot of them were shit. Um, but, you know, that was a time when they were just getting into their super posable phase. Um, before that, you know, you've got to think it was nearly all G1. G2 slightly got into all the posable figure stage, but Beast Wars just went super posable. So you've got to think, um, you know, that was just when they were getting into it. So, of course, loads of them were going to be shit. But saying that, um, lots of them were actually really, really good. Um, and, you know, like Transmetal Rampage, what a figure, what a brilliant figure. One of my best ones from the Beast Wars. Anyway, for today's review, I thought I would do um, one of the rarer figures. Um, this one cost me £29 when I bought it off a guy who lives, used to live in Japan, I think. Um, yeah, and he sent me it over, because I paid him 29 quid, obviously. Um, but then, you just couldn't get them, and when you see them on eBay now, they do go for a bit. Um, this is, of course, um, a Japanese Transformer from the Beast Wars, and is Beast Wars X9... Uh, what well, is actually called Jaguar, but we all know him as Ravage. Here we go. This is his box. This is his metals box because he was a trans metal, or they released him as a trans metal anyway. Mainly because they just it was just a basic remold slightly of trans metal Cheetor. Um, yeah, but this is box, lovely old box. Has like the um, uh, what you I don't know what you call that prism thing, thingy jiggy metal thing that glints in the light. Absolutely brilliant. Um, if we look at the back of the box, it's got sort of all these action features and stuff like that. And then if we look at the side, it's got the Tri-Predicus Council from, of course, they ruled the Predacons or what were the left of the remnants of the Decepticons. And we're going to put that over there. And, of course, all the Metals figures came with their little bio card. And I'm just going to show you this here, make sure we get it out the right way. There we go. Make sure the light isn't on that too badly. That's got Ravage there. I'm going to call him Ravage throughout this. Um, yeah, it's got Ravage there, of course, in his little action pose. And if we turn it around this side, it's got the... Oh, I can't, don't even know what you call it, but it moves, you know, when you're in the light. can't think what they're called from the life of me now. But yeah, that is pretty smart. I like that. Anyway, we're going to bring on the figure himself. Now then, this is Ravage. Now then, in the cartoon, as we all remember, Ravage actually just transformed into a cassette. And of course, I was really gutted when they announced they were making this figure that he wasn't going to transform into a cassette. Obviously, that's, I suppose, to completely do a figure like that, that would have been a lot of ingenuity and stuff, and, you know, trying to make that would have just been unfeasible, so they just done a, like a redeco of a figure, which I suppose, you know, was all right. Anyway, so there we go. This is him in his cat mode. Um, exactly the same as Transmetal Chili, or except for a slight few differences. Um, has a nice remolded head. I'm going to try and put as much light on this figure as I can, whoa, as I can because it is completely black. There we go. Everything wants to fall over now. There we go. Let me just move my hand slightly. There we go. Yeah, so this is him. He's got a nice real remolded head. Nice Jaguar head. He comes with um, these guns on the side of his legs. Represent the old G1 Ravage, of course, because he had little guns on the side of his legs. A nice picture of his ass there. <laughs> if you're interested. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Um, now then, the only problem I don't like about this is they had to put his arms underneath the body, which I really, really didn't like, because of course Transmetal Cheat or his head was the arms, so they had to find a separate place for these, because the robot uses the same head as the beast. Anyway, that is him. It's a really good, it's super, it's really poseable, the arms and legs will move. I'm not going to move them because they are super tight, and I'll move one, and then everything will just fall apart on him, which is a bit annoying. So I'm not going to do that. Anyway, right, to transform this geezer. Easy enough. We just pull out his little tail. Oh, by the way, it does have all the same things as Transmetal Cheat, or if you want to pull out these little side what's and what's it's, if I can get them out. There we go. He does have the side thrusters. I'm not going to pull them out. Anyway, yeah, but he does have all the same features near enough. All right, to transform him, we're going to pull out his tail, and that, of course, becomes his mace, the same as Transmetal Cheat, or just pull down his legs, like so, straighten them out. Flip down the little heel at the back there. That's going to give him some stability. Like so. Then we turn him around. This arm's just flip back like that. Let me make sure you're all getting this on the camera. Oh, there we go. Something all stiff as anything. 
right now then, then this whole back section just lifts up and folds down to that position I believe and then these legs just rotate upwards like that see oh my god super tight joints sometimes they're good sometimes they can be a pain in the fucking ass anyway right now then we fold out the arms to this position fold down the little chest this is going to fold down all the way like that straighten out the arms like so fold them in now then his head is just it's on a few different rotational bars in there so then we have to pull this one down that clicks into place I believe I can't remember how it does it I think it just folds into that you push it there we go that just folds into that and then we get the rest of the head and then we just pop it down like that there we go flip make sure that's in position Oh yes, yeah, sorry, remember now this has to be at a certain angle. It's got a little tab but that has to go in there, which is a bit annoying. There we go. And that holds everything together. And then we just flip his little head down. Like so, that goes there. And there we have it. And then we straighten out his arms. Uh, that needs to go like that. His arms need to spin around. Flip those in there. Sorry about this, I'm trying to do this on the camera as best I can. Um, that needs to spin round, so he's got his nice little elbow joint, that spins round, his little gun goes at the back there. Now then, that is trans, well, ravage in robot mode. Superposable as usual, um, his arms, now then, these little guns on the side you take off, and then we put them on these little bits at the side here. Like so, I'm, not gonna do, I'm only going to do one of them, and this feature was he has a super quick attack draw mode. Now then, it's a bit annoying, and we just basically flip it past that, and he's going to flip out like that. And there we go, that is him. And now he has one on both sides, because in the cartoon, of course, he used these guns. Um, yeah, a pretty good figure. Shame he doesn't transform into a cassette, but, of course, you know, that's the way it goes, unfortunately. Of course, this figure was supposed to be the reincarnated G1 Ravage in a new body, rebuilt and reprogrammed by the Predacons for use as a secret agent um, and a really 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 good figure I like it um, of course it's just a redeco of an old figure which a lot of people won't like but I do like it I love all the black because he's got black um, vacuum metalized paint on there so it's, it just looks amazing and I love the head sculpt his little mouth will open like that absolutely brilliant I love it um, yeah I think it's good I'm gonna put the other little gun in his hand just to give him that sort of look. An unfortunate thing is that when you're not using it, it does have the little gun holster under his hand, which is annoying. But, you know, what can you do? They did the best of what they could, and I actually like it. So then you can put them under there, and then we just, like I say, it's just on the little notch holding it in, and then we just let it go, and it will flip around and go and point out. There we go. <laughs> He's great. There we go. Another feature which they added, which I almost forgot, is that you open up these little chest panels, and we can see a nice Decepticon insignia in there. Um, if you get the sticker sheet with this, he does have a three. He has a Predacon, a Decepticon insignia, and a picture of the G1 Megatron, because of course, um, in the cartoon, um, we do see G1 Megatron in on the golden disc. Um, anyway, right, I'm gonna end this review there. I really hope you liked it, and um, I'll see you all next time. <laughs>